All right, so I wanna show a little math problem here that I had to solve. And, uh, you know, I, I wanna preface this. I don't know how useful this is always gonna be for strictly Roblox game development, uh, but if you're ever doing any sort of 3D rendering or, or, or uh, 3D graphics work of any sort, uh, you you've maybe have run into this before. Um, I've run into it before and I didn't know how to solve it. I finally kind of put my head down for a little bit today and I figured out that it was really simple to solve. Uh, I was really surprised that it was so simple and um, I kind of wanted to just show it because you know maybe for you you'll it'll click immediately and you'll be like oh yeah that's obvious. Uh, for me it wasn't but um, let, let's just get into it. Okay so imagine that we have a virtual path in our game. So in this case I'm representing it by uh, these, these three colored uh, cubes and I can move the path around uh, however I want and then what happens then is as I move my path another system picks up on that and renders think of like a mesh of some sort around that path and right now I'm just representing that with uh, these green parts here but you know imagine maybe it's like a railroad track or something like that right and so if you're doing that sort of rendering you're gonna run into uh, an interesting conundrum when it comes to angles, as I'll show in a second. But first of all, let me explain how this is working. When it wants to render these parts, it's basically figuring out where this position is, where my mouse is, by finding the, the cross vector from this line forward in the up vector, and then multiplying that by uh, the width of my path, or really half of the width because half on one side, half on the other. And so right now, if I look at my code, I just have this. Um, I mean, obviously, there's other stuff in here, but this is what I want to focus on. Uh, the h equals width divided by 2. h is what I'm describing as my distance from here to here, this uh, linear distance. And so width it, right now is defined as 4. And so 4 divided by 2 is 2. So 2 units or 2 studs away uh, from the center on each side is where my green line ends. And the same thing happens on each side, but at joint parts, it's a little interesting, right? So the way I was doing it is as shown here, is that it would really work the same way, is that these points right here uh, would be positioned basically at half the angle of this corner, and then kind of projected out the same h divided by two, or width divided by two. I thought that would work fine, but let's look what happens. <laughs> so if I move my point down more, let's say at 90 degrees, you start to see a serious problem. We see that our green lines are converging inward as we reach our center point, and then they converge back outward to the right width at the end. So that's, that's not ideal. You don't want that to happen. <laughs> and it becomes even more dramatic um, as we make that angle even more steep. So we can see it's really converging in at the center there. Now that's weird, right? Like, why is it doing that? Well, let's let's test it for a second. So let's make a little uh, part here. I'm gonna make a cylinder. I'm gonna size it to the right size just to kind of demonstrate what's going on, right? And so this little cylinder here is representing the uh, radius of the segments that are being drawn, the green lines, right? And so as you can see here, the green lines touch right at the uh, kind of tangential points of that, that cylinder here, as expected. And let's just put it in the center and see what happens. So as I move my red part over here and we increase the angle, we'll see that those blue points actually remain on that outer radius of the cylinder. So that's interesting, right? So our, our path is definitely being kind of pinched at the center here, but it seems like the distance is still correct. So what's going on there? Well, what's really going on is just a failure to properly calculate this position. I was thinking that you know it would always be as simple as uh, projecting outward uh, the same distance of our of our the width of our path there in order to get these outer blue points for the segments. As you can see, that's not correct. It does not work. And so, what is the solution? How can we fix this? Now, in our heads, we we can kind of think about this, right? Like this blue point clearly needs to be up around here instead. 
and right now this other blue point probably needs to be way down here. So clearly uh, locking these points to width divided by two is not cutting it, it's not correct. So what's the problem? Well, after kind of thinking that this was a linear algebra problem, I went down the path of trying to figure out how to calculate intersecting rays and everything like that. Uh, I realized it's actually a way simpler problem than that. And this actually comes down to pretty basic trigonometry. So I'm gonna jump over to just classic pencil and paper, or I guess pen and paper. And I'm gonna draw out an example segment. And actually I'm gonna put it on screen first on here, just to kind of demonstrate what I'm drawing. So right here we have just kind of a, a little segment that goes straight and then down. And I'm gonna just be focusing on drawing the center segment where it intersects. I'm gonna draw out one of these lines. And then those segments continue on, right? And so what we're seeing there again is that kind of corner point um, that was on screen here. So, you know, right here we see it uh, converge there, that, that's what we're focusing on. So the actual path that we have is rendered through the center, right? So we have this point uh, really kind of cutting through the center of this intersection. Um, and so what's interesting about this right here is that we can actually gather some information about these triangles. So first of all, they're both right triangles. So let's draw those out as needed. Okay, and so we know that they're right triangles. What other things do we know? Well, because I know the direction of both these converging lines, it's pretty trivial to then also calculate the angle of this right here. We'll call it A. Okay, so we can calculate what angle A is, and we know that this is a 90 degree, or that both of these are right triangles. And one other important and crucial fact that we know is we know that the distance right here on these outer edges is defined as a constant, we'll call it W. In our case, it was four, right? So if I go to the code again, right here, width is the, the W in this case, and width equals four. That's kind of hard coded up above. So we know that much information, so that's good. So we, we have some really critical information about uh, this triangle. And why that's important is that that's gonna help us solve where to put our points. So we think about what was going wrong is that I was always projecting uh, the, the control points, or not the control points, but the position for those segment lines from here, and I was projecting half of W. Now the problem with that is that half of W doesn't actually go all the way here. Same thing over here, it doesn't go all the way down here. If I do half of W, and I, if I would have made this even more correct, I could you know, get a protractor out and kind of draw it. But you know, if we think about the radius that half of W is, um, you know, the problem with it is that it, it kind of cuts through. There's an angle here. And so if I just project by W, I actually end up like right here. And similarly, if I go down here, I end up in the wrong position as well. So I'm not going far enough in this example here. And again, that's because I'm just calculating it strictly by, based on half of W and projecting it forward. So we need to solve this. And thankfully, basic trigonometry comes to the rescue. And so if you've taken any trigonometry class, you know the classic like Sokotoa uh, sort of saying and that really comes in handy for us because specifically if we look at this triangle the information we have is we have our angle a down here and we have our adjacent w and we have our unsolved hypotenuse which is what we want to solve for right the way we can solve for this is quite simple all we have to do is take the cosine of our angle and solve it as such because we know that the cosine equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? And so our case, we have the cosine of our angle A equals our adjacent, in this case is W over hypotenuse. And again, we're solving for hypotenuse. And so now we jump into uh, algebra 
where we have to isolate h by itself. So how do we do that? Well, if you just run through the math really quick, you see that, first of all, we have to multiply by h um, to get w by itself. And so we'd get cosine of a times h equals w. But again, we, we're trying to get h by itself. And so if we then divide by cosine of a, we see h equals w over cosine of a. Excuse my bad handwriting, but there we go. Just like that, we have solved it, kind of. The last step here is that we have to do a little bit of dividing, right? Because this angle here, A, is the angle of the whole segment here, but we only want half of it. Again, we're, we've divided this segment by half, and so really we only want half of A, and similarly, we only want half of W because we're only projecting from the center point out and backwards, not from here or here. Um, and so, again, pretty simple things, but the, the math checks out as such that our hypotenuse equals W over the cosine of A. Okay, so all that being said, if we go back to our code here, see H equals width divided by two. Now that was half of it, right? We, we do need that, but again, we need to divide our W, our width, our expected width by the cosine of A. So again, if I just write it out as such again with the correct uh, math that we actually need given half of the triangle, uh, it would be you know the width over two divided by cosine a divided by two, right? Okay, so if we look at it like that, uh, then we come over here, we already have width divided by two, so then we just have to divide by cosine and in our case, I already have the angle being calculated. So I have the angle between. I'm just going to get rid of that. And then all we need to do is take angle and divide it by 2. And by simply doing that, if we rerun our little simulation here and we start moving our point, we see that our segments remain equidistant from the center lines as expected. So just like that, with some basic trigonometry, we have solved our problem. So that's pretty cool. And I think this is kind of just a good, good example of just the necessity of having some simple trig skills equipped and uh, knowing how to take the, the simplest approach to a problem, right? Because I could have made this problem way harder than it had to have been, uh, but it turned out to be a, a pretty simple solution. And it wasn't intuitive, right? Like I wouldn't have thought that, you know, the distance between these points would become so great at these angles, but now that I'm visualizing it and seeing it, I, I can see that clearly. It, it makes a lot of sense. So yeah, that's basically all I have to show here. I thought that was just kind of an interesting thing. Again, maybe that's something you would have picked up on immediately. I don't know. Um, it certainly wasn't something that I caught on right away until I kind of dug into the math, but there it is.